Okay, so let's excuse my drawing, but let's imagine that we have an athlete and he's holding a medicine ball in his hand, outstretched arm, and the arm is outstretched um, with an angle 35 degrees with respect to the horizontal. So he's sort of holding the arm like this, and we're going to examine the net torque. Is the arm being rotated to in the upward direction or in the downward direction when it's at this point with this particular situation? So, a couple of points of order. The steel ball, the medicine ball, I guess we wouldn't use a steel ball, but we'll imagine a steel ball, maybe a kettle ball. The ball itself has a mass of 3 kilograms. His arm is straight. We said it's 35 degrees below the horizontal. The arm is 0 0.7 meters long and has a mass of 4 kilograms. We're going to assume it's evenly distributed for the sake of this problem. It's not, but instead of putting in a center of mass on that arm, we're just going to say it's evenly distributed for the sake of this problem. Now, we're using our deltoid muscle, which is up um, on our shoulder. It stands over the joint to help raise and lower our arm. And the deltoid muscle is attached, is attached 0 0.08 meters from the shoulder, so 8 centimeters from the shoulder joint, and it's exerting a force of the muscle of 15 newtons at this point. Right, so here's the scenario. The question is, is the arm rotating in the downward direction or in the upward direction given this scenario? So, rotation implies torque and we need to do a torque analysis. What is the net torque acting on this arm in order to assess whether it's on the rotation up or the rotation down? And so to do a net torque analysis, we're going to do an extended free body diagram on the arm. And I like to, as I've mentioned, draw that object in the orientation of the um, picture that I've drawn. Okay, so what are the forces acting on this arm? Well, we have the force of gravity between the arm and the earth. And that's a, that acts at the geometric center of a uniformly distributed object, which we have been told this is. And so we'll put the force of gravity on that arm at the geometric center. We also have the force of the, the ball, the steel ball. That's between the arm and the ball. And that's acting on his hand at the end of the arm. And it too acts straight down because we're holding that arm and its weight is what is exerting a force on the hand or the end of the arm. We also have the deltoid muscle. We're told that attaches at 0.08 meters from the arm and it exerts 15 newtons of force in that attachment. All right, and I think, and it, it also tells us that it makes an angle of 10 degrees with the arm bone. I'm drawing this picture going, I'm missing an angle in here. So we're going to say the angle with the arm is 10 degrees. So that's this angle here, this one. I'll just put a little dot there to represent that that's the 10 degree angle we're dealing with. And then the arm is also interacting with the shoulder joint. And this is that situation where we don't exactly know the direction this shoulder joint is acting on the arm. But we could say there's a horizontal and a vertical component of that direction. And we might make a guess at it. If we're wrong, the physics will tell us. So I would say that the shoulder joint is sort of holding the arm up. So here's the force of the shoulder in the vertical direction and preventing it from being pulled that way. So the force of the shoulder in the horizontal direction. Again, we can make a guess at this. I might allude to why I'm guessing the way I am um, because there is a leftward component of the deltoid muscle pulling it that way, so the shoulder must be going in the opposite direction. But if we're wrong, again, the physics will tell us, so don't be too caught up on making that initial guess. And separating the shoulder joint into its horizontal and vertical components is the way we analyze forces, and so it's okay to make that separation initially. Okay, so here are all our forces on the free body diagram. Now we need to identify the radii and the angle at which those forces are acting. 
So we're going to set the pivot point at the shoulder joint. Why might I do that? Well, I'm interested in the net torque on the object. And I'm given all the other forces except the force of the shoulder joint. So if I set my pivot point at the shoulder joint, then the radii for both the shoulder vertical and the shoulder horizontal is equal to zero. So the torque for the shoulder vertical and the shoulder horizontal is equal to zero. And that's strategically a good idea. I realized I did not label that force. All right, so if that's our pivot point, we can then look at the varying radii. Here's the radius of the deltoid muscle, the radius of the force of gravity, and the radius of the ball. So the radius of the deltoid muscle, we are told is 0 0.08 meters from the shoulder joint. That was given in the problem. The radius for the force of gravity, well, we're told that the arm is 0.7 meters long, and so we have 0 0.035 meters to its geometric center. And the radius of the ball, well, the arm is 0.7 meters long, and the ball is being held at the end, so that radius is 0.7 meters. Okay, now we get to look at the angles. So, the angle of the deltoid, the angle of the force of gravity, and the angle of the ball. All right, we are told in the problem that this angle, remember, is 35 degrees. Okay, so angle number one. We extend our radius. I think I'm going to put the angles in pink. We extend our radius from the pivot point to the point of action and draw the angle from the radius curling to the force. We know that this dot angle, I couldn't write the number in there, is 10 degrees, and so we have 180 degrees all the way over minus that 10. We get a radius of 170 degrees. Now that is in the counterclockwise direction, so it's indeed positive. The force of gravity, we extend our radius and curl to the force. Now, what is that angle? Well, if this angle is 35, this angle is 35 degrees, and 90 minus 35 is 55. So we know the angle between the force of gravity and the radius is 55 degrees, and that's in the clockwise direction, so it's negative. All right, similarly, if we extend this radius, we know that this angle is 35 degrees, making this angle 35 degrees, and again, a negative 55 degrees. All right, so here are our radii and our angle. We can now look at the net torque. We're going to label our forces, one, two, and three. We've already decided that these two forces four and five, well, I'll put them up here, four and five, give us a zero net torque, but we'll just include it in our analysis. So torque one is force one, radius one, sine of theta one. The force for force one is 15 newtons. The radius is 0 0.08 times the sine of 170 degrees, which was positive. So 15 times 0 0.08 times the sine of 170 gives us 0 0.209 newton meter, or 208, excuse me, newton meters. All right, torque number two. Force two, radius two, sine theta two. Force two is the weight of our arm. We, told, we are told the arm is four kilograms, so the weight of the arm is four times 9.8, which is 39.2 newtons. So we have 39.2. It's acting at 0.35 
times the sine of negative 55. We get 39.2 times 0.35 times the sine of negative 55. We get negative 11.2 newton meters. Okay. Force number three, or torque three, excuse me, is force three, radius three, sine of theta three. Well, we're told that it's a three kilogram mass, which means that the force of gravity is 29.4 newtons. So we have 29.4 times 0.7 times the sine of negative 55 times 29.4 times 0.7. And we get negative 16.86 newton meters. And torque 4 we said was equal to 0 and torque 5 we said was equal to 0. So the sum of our torques is 0 0.208. That poor deltoid muscle isn't doing a whole lot, is it? Minus 11.2 minus 16.86. So 16.86 <clears throat> plus 11.2 minus 0 0.208. We get a net torque of negative 27.8 newton meters. So that deltoid muscle is relaxing, causing the arm to rotate in the clockwise direction. All right, so assessing the situation, drawing that free body diagram, recognizing the radii and the angles associated with your forces after selecting that pivot point. Remember, we did that strategically. We wanted the net torque acting on the shoulder and that, of course, means we need to get rid of those torques on the shoulder because we won't, don't know what that force is. Doing the torque analysis and understanding that direction tells us something about the rotation. All right, good job.